Now let's solve some percentage problems. So we'll go straight into question one, guys. It says, in a box of 240 apples, 20% are red. How many apples are not red? Well, if 20% are red, that means the remaining 80% are not red, isn't it? So we'll multiply 80% of the 240 to calculate how many are not red. Okay, that's all you really need to do. Figure out what percentage are not red. So that's just 100% minus the 20%, isn't it? And then just do the calculation, guys. 80% you can change it to a decimal if you like, 0 0.8. And if you multiply it, we get 192. So 192 apples out of the 240 are not red. Now question two. Our test result is 56 out of 80. What percentage is this? Well, to get percentage, pro uh, sorry, percentage of a particular fraction, we'll multiply the fraction by the 100%. That's all you need to do. So multiply by 100 and stick a percentage sign at the end. So, now to simplify this, you can, if you can just calculate it your normal way, but I like to just do some cancelling. See how 80 and 100, they have common factors of 20. So I'm going to cross out the 80 and it's going to become 4, isn't it? Because 80 divided by 20 is 4. And I'm going to cross out the 100 and it will become a 5. 100 divided by 20 is going to be 5. Now, look guys, the 4 and the 56 also has further common factors. 4 and 56, I think they're both divisible by 4. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to write it down again, and let's cross them out. The 4 cancels, because 4 divided by 4 is just um, 1, and the 56 cancels. And the 56 will now become a 14, because 56 divided by 4 is 14. So now what we have left is 14 times 5%. We can multiply it and get 70. 14 times 5 is 70, guys, so it's simply 70%. That, respects, that re, um, reflects this percentage, uh, this the score of the test. Make sense, guys? Question 3. A shirt costing $20 is reduced by 25%. What is the new selling price? So basically, it's on a sale. It's on a 25% sale. So if I'm having a 25% discount, how much of the original value am I paying? Well, we're only paying the remaining 75%, aren't we? So um, to get the 75, you do 100%, which is the total, minus away the 25, and then that's how you get the 75%. So we're basically only paying 75% of the original value, which is $20. Do the multiplication. You can change it to a decimal if you like. We've got the 0 0.75, and multiply, you should get $15. So eventually, we're only paying $15. That's the selling price. All right, question four. Tom deposits $2,000 to a bank and it appreciates at 10% per year. Calculate its value after one year. So if it's appreciating, that means it's increasing, isn't it? So if we're increasing by 10%, basically we're getting 110% of the initial value, right? Because 100% plus 10% is 110%. So, that as a decimal is 1.1, so basically you're multiplying by 1.1 of the initial value. And just calculate it, guys, it should be 2,220, sorry, 2,200. That will be the value after one year. And see how it's bigger than the initial value? That's because it's appreciated. So let's do B, in two years. Now this is the value after one year, but if it appreciates again for another year, that means we multiply that value by 110%. Make sense, guys? So that's already appreciated for one year. And now it's going to appreciate the second year. So to that value that we ended with, we multiply another 110% because it appreciates 10% of the previous year. So if you change it to a decimal, 1.1, and multiply, you get $2,420. So now it's even bigger because it's again appreciated further for another year. So get the pattern, guys. So to get to the second year, basically what I did was find the initial year, which is given to us 2,000. We appreciate it by 1.1, by multiplying 1.1. And then here I multiplied by 1.1 again. So I've multiplied 1.1 two times. So part C, when it asks us to find the value after five years, the initial value, guys, $2,000, we're appreciating 1.1. We have to multiply 1.1 five times. Can you see that? Because it's doing this every single year. It's appreciating by 10% every year. So multiply all of those values, guys, and get a value like this. 3,221.02. You can round it to the nearest cent. Make sense, guys? So that's the idea. So you just got to find the pattern. All right, question five. 
a number is increased um, 20 percent then the result is decreased by 20 percent so it's increased 20 percent and has decreased by 20 percent so two things are happening now it says to find the number of sorry find the number if the final result is 192 now let's use a little bit of algebra here guys I'm gonna let n be the number okay be the number that we're looking for now see how it's going to be increased by 20 percent which means it's going to be 100 plus the 20 percent which is 120 percent and then if we decrease that value by 20 percent we're basically doing 100 minus 20 percent which is 80 percent so that's why I'm doing all at once the n I'm going to multiply by 120 percent because I'm increasing it and to that value I multiply by 80 percent because now I'm decreasing it make sense guys and that outcome becomes 192. Do you get the process guys? You can't do you have to do it individually like that. So now let's do the multiplication. Um, the 120 percent is 1.2 as a decimal. That's 0 0.8 as a decimal. Now to get rid of these on this side because we just want n, move these over to the other side by dividing. So I'm dividing by 1.1 and 0 0.8 and put that in the calculator we get 200. So therefore the number is 200. Make sense, guys? So watch how I did the increasing and decreasing.